This is episode 23, the Reignite Podcast Power Edition, principle number two, better sleep. Welcome to the Reignite Podcast. My name is Todd Judkins, a former naval officer and corporate consultant turned life coach. And each week we'll bring you an inspirational person or message to help you discover how to reignite your life, get back in the game, and thrive in everything you do. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now let's light the fuse and reignite. Before we get started with this episode of the Reignite Podcast Power Edition, I'd like to bring you a message from one of our sponsors. A powerful mindset requires sound nutrition. One of the principles I follow to reignite my life is intermittent fasting. I use this technique combined with nutrient timing to ensure my body utilizes nutrition efficiently and my brain is primed for performance. These are some of the principles taught by our health and wellness advisors. If you'd like to learn more about natural whey or vegetable-based protein and other supplements to support your health goals, whether you want to release weight, maximize performance, increase energy, focus on healthy aging, or simply to live your dash, go to http colon slash slash bit dot ly slash reignite superfood all one word to learn more and of course this information is contained down below in our show notes thank you and enjoy this episode of the reignite podcast welcome to the reignite power podcast edition. power edition principle number two better sleep this is the second part of a three-part series where i'm going to talk to you about what's the principles of reignite and what makes up a reignited lifestyle now in the previous episode we talked about principle number one less stress but today we're going to talk about the magic the secret sauce and that is better sleep where did we lose the ability to sleep prehistoric man followed the circadian cycles of the earth for thousands of years that was lit by an amber campfire and the stars alone. That amber glow today even serves us well when we go camping, when we're sitting around a campfire, the soothing glow of that fire. And I know for me, some of the best sleep I get is when I'm out under the stars, going to sleep by campfire the way it was meant to be. But that all changed with the invention of the carbon filament light bulb in 1882 by Thomas Edison. That one single invention allowed us to turn the night sky into daylight. That invention was followed up in 1880 with the discovery of alternating current that really just changed how we distributed electricity, made it available in every home and every room, including our bedrooms. Now these were great contributions to humanity by Mr. Thomas Edison and Mr. Nikola Tesla, but not so great for the Sandman. Today, the blue light spectrum emitted from our cell phones and screens and electronic devices and gaming equipment suppress our ability to trigger melatonin and delay our sleep. So it's no wonder with modern technology that we've lost our ability to connect to the circadian cycles that our body, our biochemistry, our physiology, and our mental capacity was designed to take advantage of. Sleep science is starting to catch up on the importance of sleep. And I know we all know the detriment of short-term performance hits just by sleeping sleep deprivation. You know, you look back at just, just recent history and some of the biggest industrial accidents have occurred at the time most of us are asleep. And I'm pointing specifically to the nuclear disaster at Chernobyl. The events that occurred, the sequence of events that allowed the meltdown of that nuclear reactor all happened when most individuals should be asleep when we des were designed to be asleep. Now, science is also starting to discover the long-term health degradations of modern society not getting enough sleep. You see, recently, scientists have started to uncover how the brain actually gets rid of its waste. You see, from the neck down, we have a lymphatic system that actually gets our waste, collects it, and puts it in our bloodstream and excretes it through our excretory process. It's a very efficient process, but the brain, the brain is the brain and the brain has to do things a little differently. So what the brain does is it actually has to shrink its brain cells to let fluid flush over those cells to remove waste. But here's the catch. That process of shrinking your brain 
lessening your capacity occurs when you're asleep. Now, science is not there yet, but they're also starting to make certain connections to long-term health issues such as dementia and Alzheimer's. The science is still out on this, but the connection seems to grow day by day. So the importance of sleep is our secret sauce. It gives us the ability to perform at our max, to get that unbeatable mindset and to reduce our stress. So I know you're wondering, and you've heard it all over the place, how much sleep do you really need to be healthy? Well, my advice is let your body tell you. And I don't think in terms of hours, I always think in terms of sleep cycle. And the sleep cycle is approximately 90 minutes as you descend through the various stages of sleep, through REM, into deep sleep, and kind of cycle back up through that process and cycle down again. Now, a sleep cycle lasts, like I said, approximately 90 minutes, right? And I try to get five to six sleep cycles a night making sure that I'm waking up on that up cycle, that natural awakening as dawn is approaching. And that's why I don't use an alarm clock. I know that sounds kind of erase, whoa, you know, I'm gonna sleep, you know, past where I need to get up and I'm gonna be late for this activity or that activity. But I have an intention of setting my night and going to bed at a consistent time and waking up at a consistent time and my body knows the cycles. So I no longer need a, an alarm clock. And those times that I do feel like I'd want to be extra sure that I don't sleep past a certain point is I have actually a device that mimics the sunrise in my room. So if I need to get up at 4 a.m., I will set my alarm for 4 a.m. And at 30 minutes prior to that time, this alarm clock starts mimicking the sunrise. Now, I know you're wondering, how can that wake you up? Well, the magic of all this is, is that we just don't have photoreceptors in our eyes. We also have it in our skin. So as you're coming up on that sleep cycle, the photoreceptors are sensing that daylight and begin the process of waking you up naturally. So if you ever wonder why sometimes when you, you've had a, you've, or you felt you've had a full night's sleep, but you wake up groggy, you're slamming on that alarm clock, well, you're probably waking up on a down cycle where you're descending into a deep sleep and all of a sudden you're jolted by that alarm clock. So my recommendation is, is to time your sleep. Again, this goes back to having intention about everything you do, and that includes your sleep. I know a time I need to be asleep to wake up at a certain time, or if I go to sleep, I know what time I need to get up to actually get the full five to six cycles of good quality sleep. So when it comes to sleep, it's just not about quality, but it's about quantity as well. Five to six sleep cycles kind of equates to seven and a half to nine hours of sleep and let your body tell you what's appropriate for you. Now, there are some quick strategies to improve your sleep quality. And I always tell everybody that you want a good night's sleep. It really starts when you first wake up. If you go back to a previous episode, I talk about the power of the morning routine, and this goes into your sleep as well. When you get up, have that routine in place that sets your day up. Bring your what I call awake hormones into play. Go out and get 15 to 20 minutes of direct sunlight. There is no better mechanism to trigger your morning than to get out and getting a little bit of grounding in the soil, direct sunlight, and movement in your body. Go for a walk, get your exercise in. The second tip I'm gonna give you is to create that sleep den. And everybody's like, whoa, well, what's a sleep den? Well, a couple of things. If you come to my house, I have the ultimate sleep den. First thing, in my bedroom, there is nothing but blackout curtains. So that I have the ability to control all light coming into my room. I can make noon look like midnight. And that is important because when we sleep, we need to sleep in a dark setting. The second thing I have in my room is any kind of light I have is amber light. And I actually have those controllable light spectrum lights so that if I need to get up and get blue light in the morning, I can flip that switch and have blue light. But at the night, I have a program so that as the sun is setting, that amber glow starts coming down and bringing the light down in the room so that I keep in connection with the circadian cycles of the earth. 
The other thing I do is to make sure my temperature is set low and comfortable for sleeping. Now, I live in the desert southwest, and that is easier said than done, because in the in the heat of the summer, we sometimes hit our lows at about 90 degrees. So to crank the air conditioning down is, is something when you get it down and you can get it to 78 and you feel cool, but you really need to go cooler. So I have other mechanisms to make sure that I can cool down. One of the things I can do is I can take an ice bath and cool my body down. A cool body is a body that's preparing to go to sleep. It's like tucking your body away and transitioning from day to night. Also, quality air in a room is key. One of the things I do is I have uh, ionic air filter. I have uh, some HEPA filters that I use occasionally just to keep the air quality nice and clean. And the neat thing about those devices is they also provide some white noise that helps you go to sleep. Okay. There's other things you can do too. And these are kind of natural out there. One is exercise. Exercise in the morning. Get your, get your body moving, get your cycle set, you're awake, and that means at the end of the day, you're naturally growing into tiredness and your night patterns are taking over and you should be asleep when you go to bed within about 14 minutes. The other thing that's really good for sleep, and I know a lot of you are gonna love this, is sex. There's a reason men after sex just go right out. Having great sex also means that you are on your way to a great night's sleep. And let's not forget about, you know, proper nutrition and proper supplementation. All aspects of your overall health are key to sleeping. And sleep is one of the leading principles of a reignite lifestyle. We all must learn to sleep like a kid again. Less stress, better sleep, unbeatable mindset. I'm Todd Judkins. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Reignite Podcast Power Edition, where we'll come to you each week with an inspirational person or message to help you reignite your life. So now get out there, light the fuse, and reignite. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Reignite Podcast. If this episode resonated with you in any way, please share it with a friend. One of the greatest experiences human beings is being able to mastermind as a group where we get together and collectively share and build off of each other's energy. Reigniting is no longer about accepting life as it comes, but designing the life you desire. We are committed to bringing you thought-leading and thought-provoking discussions to inform and motivate you in finding the joy in your journey, no matter what road you choose to take. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Todd Judkins, or send me an email at connect at toddjudkins.com. I'd love to hear about your struggles, your successes, and your thoughts. Thank you for listening, Reignite Nation. And always remember, the joy is not only in the destination, but what life has to offer in the journey. We'll be back with another full episode on Tuesday and with a short reignite message on Friday just to jumpstart your weekend. Until then, keep that fuse lit and reignite.